my forthcoming book, The Event of Literature, is um, a, an odd, a, a sort of time warp in a way, because it is actually a sort of return to pure literary theory, which these days is, is less popular than it was in the 80s and 90s. Literary theory as such, I think, was rapid, well, was finally overtaken by other developments, particularly post-colonialism, post-modernism, and so on. And in the process, a number of important questions of literary theory that I think hadn't really got answered, including the old, old chestnut, what is literature, um, was in a sense put on the back burner. And so my new book, The Event of Literature, is actually a very consciously return to the days of you know, what you might call high or pure literary theory, raising questions about narrative, about literature, about fictionality, about literary language, which in a sense, as I say, have been shelved really uh, for too long over that intervening period. Literature as a concept, as we know it today, is of very recent historical provenance. It basically probably comes to us only from the end of the 18th century, from the Romantic period. Um, and it comes from us, it comes to us with a huge, uh, it's fraught with a huge important history. That's to say, it's, it comes out of a situation of great social turbulence, the Industrial Revolution and so on, the, the political revolutions in France and America, where history was moving rapidly under people's feet and they needed, they felt that certain things of value were being threatened and art or literature became repositories of value that had then to be rather jealously protected from the winds of history. So the concept of literature as a sort of privileged enclave that we receive is by no means common to human history. It, it comes out of a very re recent past. How, f how far do questions of literary theory matter is, is an important point. Um, it's, hard, it's hard to weigh, to, 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 to weigh that up, I think. How far does literature matter? It, it, matter? it matters enormously, of course, for people who are engaged in it. But, of course, the vast majority of people aren't. That's one reason, I think, why there was a shift sometime in the 1980s, perhaps, from literature to culture. There was a kind of seismic shift there. Because if you define culture in a broad and generous sense, then, of course, it's something that most people are bound up with. Indeed, I I rather, I tend to say these days that uh, if you want a definition of culture, it's what people are prepared to kill for. You know, I don't mean for Bach and Beethoven, but I mean for identity, language, and so on. Um, how far these things matter is difficult. Literary theory was important because it opened literature up into areas, political, psychoanalytical, which do matter clearly to anybody, I think. It was partly an attempt to give a new, a new kind of relevance to the study of literature and make it more exciting. Um, but I still, you know, um, I would say that although culture is what we people are prepared to kill for or die for, as a good old materialist, I still don't think that culture is where it's at. I mean, I don't think that culture, however important it is, goes all the way down and therefore culture is a bit like sexuality it's always very hard to avoid either overestimating it or underestimating it the event of literature is i think a book for people who remain interested in literary theory or indeed for people who want to come to it afresh and who don't perhaps who haven't had much training or history in it but i hope it's also a book not just for people in literature. I mean, it begins, for example, with looking at the debates, the medieval debates between the realists and the nominalists, which are not at all about literature, but so that in the process of raising the question, what is literature, what is fiction, I hope I'm raising issues which are of more general import and which, um, you know, are, are relevant to people who aren't actually in the area of literature at all. I think whenever you get theory in a very big, grand way, as you did in the 70s, the 80s, it, it isn't a sense symptom. It's not only, it's not reducible to a symptom, it's a thing in its own right, but it also says sort of, all is not well. Um, there's an urgent need for some reason or other um, to think through a practice again and to think it through intensively and radically. Theory is really, um, 
what we do coming to a new kind of self-consciousness, reflecting upon its own assumptions in a new kind of way. And that doesn't always happen. One doesn't always need to do that. But if a discipline or a practice is pitched into crisis, either because of something going on within it, or because of external historical factors, and this was very much the case with the situation of culture or the humanities in the late 1960s, um, then either it thinks itself through again in new ways, or it might just perish and die. And I, so I think theory, in a big sense of the word, is always a more than theoretical, more than intellectual phenomenon. I'm very interested in, in, in fiction and the idea of fictionality, what is fiction, and I have been for some years. And I've also noted that it's not really been a topic raised much by literary theory, in other words, by the area in which I've worked. It's much more been a topic raised by the philosophy of literature. Um, and in the new book, I'm really drawing a great deal on the philosophy of literature to say, look, you know, these, these, these notions um, are not just the pursuit of some, you know, eccentric Anglo-Saxon philosophers. They actually do, you know, they go right to the heart of much of what we call literature. There are two different camps, really. There's literary theory and there's the philosophy of literature. Philosophy of literature is a very different kind of animal. And one thing I'm trying to do in, in my new book, The Event of Literature, is actually, and rather unusually, I think, is to get some dialogue going between these actually two rather alien adversaries. Um, philosophy of literature is largely Anglo-Saxon philosophy, um, moving into the field of, 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 say, aesthetics, raising questions about the meaning uh, or definition of art or literature, the importance of, of, of intention, uh, the nature of fiction. It raises some very, very vital and fascinating questions, which overlap with literary theory, I think. But literary theory, of course, comes much more from a continental philosophical tradition. And those two traditions haven't really spoken much to each other. People sometimes think, well, either you have a very stringent definition of something or there's no way of defining it at all. You know, it's, it's completely up for grabs. I think that is a dangerous and false opposition. Um, Wittgenstein famously said that it made perfect sen <coughs> sense to say to somebody, stand roughly here. You know, you don't need to measure it down to the last millimeter. And I use a lot of Wittgenstein in the book because Wittgenstein has a sense of the roughness of language, the, the necessary roughness of definitions and ideas of things without thereby conceding to some rather modish relativism in which nothing means anything. I think literary theory um, needs to be revived in a sense and, and its relevance rediscovered and, and it's part of my of the aim of my new book to do that. Literary criticism is in a sense an even more parlous situation. I mean um, it really, uh, literary criticism as I understood it and as I was trained, uh, the discipline in which I was trained, the close analysis, uh, alert, uh, responsive analysis of literary works and language is in many senses becoming a kind of moribund pursuit, I think. And this is really very worrying because, you know, it, it works upon language which is part of the stuff we're made of. Um, and to encourage a sensitivity to the shiftingness and strategies of language, I think is vital, and that's what a literary education usually, you know, usefully did. I think that's much less so today in English courses, in literary courses. So, you know, part of my perhaps rather you know middle-aged campaigning is to is to reassert or reaffirm the centrality of literary analysis in in a sense in a quite in a quite restricted way. I don't mean by that to cut the text off from history, you know, but that we have to, students need to learn to respond to the forms and devices of literary texts, not simply to abstract their content, which is what they often nowadays tend to do, I think.